morning. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, the hate will not stop you. Oh, turn to your other neighbor, say, neighbor, the hate will not stop you. Go ahead and encourage your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been facing at work. <laughs> I don't know what you've been facing in that relationship. I don't know what you've been facing in that friendship. But tell them, say the hate will not stop you. You can be seated in the presence of our God. civil rights leader, but he was also a man of God. He said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Turn to your neighbor and say, only love can do that. Only love can do that. And then I got another quote here from the late pastor A.W. Tozer. He said, to be right with God has often meant to be in trouble with men. Yeah, it is said throughout the streets of America and even around the world that some people hate Christians. Yeah, they, they, they utter that Christians are stupid, annoying, and judgmental bigots. And if you are a believer in the building or watching online, living in America or around the globe, I know that you have heard those words uttered before. However, the question is a resounding why. Why are believers hated so much? Why are believers around the world Facing hate. And I found the answer as to why we are hated. And the simple reason is this. Because Jesus said so. Not Simon, but Jesus. He said it is absolutely actual and for sure factual that you will be hated. And before we dig into the why and get deep into that thing that Jesus said. I don't care who you are in here. If you have professed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've given your life to him, and you publicize your love for him, automatically you will be persecuted. Oh, Y'all not going to say nothing up in here. Y'all, uh -huh. you, you will be hated for his name's sake. In some foreign countries, some are even dying because they refuse to deny Jesus. And hear me good this morning. It does not take much for you to be hated. All you got to do is open your mouth about Jesus and somebody somewhere will begin to hate on you. Mm. I thank God we have a man of God that is not a coward. Watch this. He is not afraid to preach against sin. And some preachers, some, some preach, somebody say some preachers, have become passive and are literally watching people go to hell with gasoline draws on because they refuse to preach against sin. And the world, they like those preachers. Yeah, they fall in love with those preachers because they will not rain down heaven on all of these hellish parades. Yeah, the love they have for those preachers, the world loves those preachers because the world have left the most high God and they have started following other gods. Yeah, put up Deuteronomy 31.16 real quick. Here's a scripture that you may have not ever seen before. Deuteronomy 31, 16. And if you're in here, you got a Bible, you know, you got your Bible notes, you need to be taking notes, you know, write, write down the scriptures and whatever God places in your heart as I'm preaching here. 
Deuteronomy 31, 16, we're going to look at the B clause. And it says, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. Whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. People of God, the world loves the preacher who will say nothing about their whoring after other gods. The world really applauds and they celebrate the preacher who says nothing to the whole. Yeah, God calls you a whole when you go a whoring after other gods. I'm in the scripture. Somebody say he in the book. Oh, some of y'all looking at me strange. Turn to your neighbor and say, he in the book, he in the book. The world loves that preacher because they won't say nothing to the whole. They won't say nothing to the married whole. They won't say nothing to the broke whole. They won't say nothing to the lying whole. They won't say nothing to the weed smoking, pill popping, drunk hoe. And they won't say nothing to the hating hoe. Now, please understand, we all in here have had some dirt and got dirty, but God didn't call us to stay in that dirt. He sent men and women of God to address the sin problem in the world and preach truth to power. Something is wrong. Something is wrong if everyone speaks well of you. Something is wrong. Something is wrong if everybody speak well of you. According to the Bible, if you're riding with Jesus, you're supposed to have haters. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you're supposed to have haters. Yeah, you're supposed to have haters. So don't be surprised uh huh, when they hating on you. Uh huh. Don't be surprised when they talk about you behind your back. Uh huh. Shout, I'm supposed to have haters. Yeah, Luke 6, 26 says this. Luke, go that real quick. Luke 6, 26. You can put that up as well. Luke 6, 26. Because everybody's not supposed to be speaking well of you. Look at what it says. Woe unto you. When all men speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. So that lets me know if everybody's speaking well of you, you might have some false things going on. God calls you false when all men speak well of you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to have some haters. Now tell them if they didn't know, say everybody don't like you. Come on. Say everybody don't like you. Some, some, uh, some people watching online, come on, say, I'm telling, say everybody don't like you. Yeah, everybody don't like you. Now turn, turn to your neighbor and say, I got some haters. I got some haters. Yeah, yeah. Last year, last year, last year I started a new job uh, in the flooring industry. I, I, I went into an industry I, I knew nothing about. And, and one day I'm sitting in a meeting and minding my own business. Somebody say he was minding his own business. Yeah, and my colleague, my colleague in conversation as he was speaking, uh, uh, he was speaking about another preacher. And he said out loud, I hate preachers. And at first it threw me for a loop because he didn't know who I was. But the other person in the meeting knew who I was. And they said it. I didn't say it. They said it. Because, see, when you're really walking by faith and you're really in your call, people know who you are. And she said, Dimitri is a preacher. And immediately he got shook and apologized. And from that moment forward, I knew where he stood. And watch this. I respected that. I respected it. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm yet praying for his deliverance. However, I cannot respect... Or what I cannot respect is the wolf in sheep clothing. Oh my, oh my. Mm. I cannot roll with the wolf in sheep clothing because they have a form of godliness, but they denying the power thereof. See, somebody should have said amen right there. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you should have said amen right there now. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're pretending like they like you. Talk to 
talking about them wolves in sheep clothing. They pretending like they like you. Let me go deep. They pretending like they love you. And the whole time they're stabbing you in your back, lying in your faith, in your face, giving you fake love. And the whole time they full of hate. Somebody say they just full of it. They just full of it. Let me pause right there because I got a prophetic announcement for every one of your haters, both near and far. Keep on hating. Yeah, because your hate, watch this, is free advertising for me. It is free marketing for me. God is using their lies and their rumors to build your platform. Yeah, their hate is actually making you stronger. Their hate is actually making you wiser. And their hate is actually making you better. Yeah, so keep on texting. Keep on DMing about me. Keep on talking bad about me. It's making me strong. It's making me wiser and it's making me better. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, them haters are making me stronger. Say they're making me wiser and they're making me better. And people of God, don't worry, watch this, if they keep on lying in your face and pretending like they on your team. Yeah, because God told me to tell you they ain't nothing but a snake. Mm, they ain't nothing but a snake. And the higher heights God is going to take you and the elevation that God is going to place on your life that you're getting ready to experience, I come to tell you they are not going to be able to make the trip because snakes can't fly. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so keep on hissing with your hating self. Keep on uh -huh, hissing with your hating self. God says you're going to stay on the ground. Yeah, I hear you hating saying the church ain't all that. I hear you hating saying it don't take all of that. I hear you hissing. God is saying you will remain grounded, altogether broke, altogether busted, and altogether disgusted. And you shall remain crawling with your hissing self. Yeah, you can jump, but God says you can't fly. Yeah, turn to your neighbor and say, I pray to God. You ain't no hater up in here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's going to be hard for you to sit through this sermon if you a hater up in here. Turn to your neighbor and say, I pray to God. You ain't no hater up in here. Yeah, you're going to have to tip out in a minute because uh -huh, it's going to be real tough for you to sit amongst all this love being spewed out if you a hater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep preaching. I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be hard. Let's go deeper. Somebody say, why all the hate? Yeah, why all the hate? Why are Christians experience all, experiencing all of this hate? Go to Matthew 10, 16. Somebody say, he almost to the scripture. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. All right, Matthew 10, 16. It says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Wow. He says, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is Jesus telling the disciples, look, you get ready to go on your missionary journey. So you finna get ready to go out there and spread the gospel. You finna go out there and publicize who I am. He says, get ready for the wolves. Look at verse number 17. He says, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. In other words, they're going to give you lashes. They're going to try to whip your tail for telling people about Jesus. Yeah, people mad and angry at you because you're lifting up Jesus and giving him the glory. Look at verse number 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony uh -huh, against them and the Gentiles. Look at verse number 19. For, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. 
For it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. And look at verse number 24. It is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Verse number 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. But look at verse number 22, and this is where our focus is. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now let's look at the Amplified Bible. It says, and you shall be hated by everyone because of your association with my name. But it is the one who has patiently preserved and endured to the end who will be saved. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, you will be hated because of your association with the name of Jesus. Yeah, now, now, now you need to be thinking about all the hell somebody been putting you through. Is it because Jesus is on your name? Mm-hmm. We see this uh, with Peter, who denied Jesus when the hate showed up to take his life. And may we never, ever, ever buckle under pressure because of hate. May we, may we continue to stand for Jesus. Now look, I want you to hear something real quick. In the Message Bible, it says it like this. When people realize it is the living God you are presenting and not some idol that makes them feel good, they're going to turn on you. And watch this. The Message Bible says this. Even people in your own family. I'm not going to help me do this thing today, huh? There is a great irony here, the Message Bible says, proclaiming so much love, experiencing so much hate. And then the Message Bible says, but don't quit. Don't cave in. It will all be worth it in the end. So in other words, people of God, the hate will not stop you. The believer's life is, will be full of blessings and truth. And it will make some people uncomfortable because you are presenting God and not some dumb idol that makes their flesh feel good. They're going to hate, but don't let that hate stop you, watch this, from starting a business. Don't let that hate stop you, come on, from living your dreams. Don't let that hate stop you, watch this, from getting married. Uh -huh. Don't let that hate stop you from loving and living again. Watch this, the message translation said, I don't care if they're in your own family. Let me help somebody in here. Some of your family members been hating on you for years. Yeah, they've been hating on you for years. Every Thanksgiving and every Christmas, when you leave the get-together, they begin to hissing and start talking about what they saw. Oh, uh, girl, did you see what they had on? Did, did you see this? Did you see how their house looked over here? Did you see this? They begin to hiss. And I know I got some people in here and those people that are watching online that will keep spreading love even though the hate keep on coming. God is saying to you this morning, don't quit and don't cave in. Why? Because victory shall be yours. Turn to your neighbor, encourage him, bump him and say, keep, keep going, keep going. Say the hate will not stop you. Come on, bump, bump another neighbor. Come on and say, keep going, keep going. The hate will not stop you. Hallelujah. Now, 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 I want you to understand real quick because I don't want you to, to always just think it, the hate is a person. Because hate is a spirit. It's not a person. A hateful person carries the spirit of hate. And I believe hate forms out of jealousy. Wow. Hate forms out of jealousy. Y'all making me nervous in here because some of y'all ain't saying amen. You're making me real nervous. See, you can't see what I'm seeing. I'm seeing folks looking down, looking at the wall, looking over. I'm trying to see now what's going on. Turn to your neighbor and say, hate forms from jealousy. It forms from jealousy. 
And when we deal with jealousy, we're talking about the spirit of envy. We're talking about the spirit of resentment. We're talking about the spirit of bitterness. We're talking about the spirit of discontentment. And we're talking about the spirit that holds grudges. You still mad about what somebody did in 2009? In 2000, getting ready to be 23? That jealousy, hear me good, may be driven by low self-esteem or it's driven by somebody with a poor self-image of themselves. They don't like themselves, so it's impossible for them to like anybody else. Some people hate themselves before they got a problem with you. Because watch this, they are too afraid uh huh, to walk and be who God has called them to be. And they are jealous uh huh, because you answered your call and they call still ringing. I'm going to preach up in here if, if, if you don't help me. I'm going to preach up in here even if you don't help me. I had an old man. I had somebody say years ago, years ago. I had an old man that was jealous of me. This man was pushing 70, jealous of me. I had first got into management in television, and he was the senior management, and I was the lower level management. My first day on the job, somebody say his first day. He's in front of the team, and this is what he says on my first day on the job. He says, Dimitri is your new sales manager. But he was not my first choice. Wow. And I'm like, excuse me? Wait a minute. This is a whole nother different level of hate right here. Wait a minute. You, you, you telling folks, come on, I just met these folks, and I got to lead this team. And you're telling them, come on, that I am not your first choice. And I'm like, I know because you didn't hire me. God did. God skipped him, watch this, and gave me the position, wow. and he kept on hating. Wow. He kept on hating. He kept on setting up obstacles, set, kept on doing this, and kept on, do, kept on doing that, and kept on making these stories, and kept on doing this, and creating mess, and creating this until God fired him and gave me his position. Uh, because, see, when you are a believer, the hate will not stop you. I can't get no help up in here. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, when you are a true believer and you walk by faith and not by sight, I don't care what type of sabotage they set up, that hate ain't going to stop your blessing. And they better be careful who they talking to. The Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. See, you got to be careful who you put your mouth on. Mm -hmm. You better be careful who you're talking about behind closed door. Some of you are in trouble because you're running your mouth too much about an anointed individual. Yeah, I'll tell y'all the whole story. Let me just go ahead and tell y'all the whole story. The man got fired in front of me. That's how bad it was. He got fired in front of me. And then they took the company car. I had to drive him to the, to the rental place so he can get a car. Now, do you know how uncomfortable that situation was? I wanted to say, bro, am I still your, your second choice? I'm trying to tell you who you're talking to, you, who's preaching to you today. See, see, I got an anointing on me that'll stop all that hate in your life. See, I got an anointing on me that'll make you trail through over that hate. I got an anointing on me that'll let you run through, come on, here, come on, run through troops and jump over walls. I have an anointing on me. First Peter 4.12. Go there, First Peter 4.12. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, the hate will not stop you. So I don't care what they setting up on that job, the hate ain't gonna stop you, man. 
You still going to get promoted. You still going to get the bonus. You still going to, come on, your, your business still going to prosper. Come on, your body still going to be healed. Come on, you're, you're still going to be walking in favor and victory. I thought y'all would be a little bit more excited about this message, man. 1 Peter 4.12, behold. 1 Peter 4.12, behold. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. And not strange concerning a fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at verse number 13. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Look at verse number 14, people of God. If this is for you, if you be repro reproached. For the name of Christ, if you be rebuked for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you on their part. He is evil spoken of, but on your part, God is glorified. People of God, turn to your neighbor and say, the world gonna hate. But you need to turn around and give God glory. Yeah, turn to your neighbor and say, the world is going to hate on me. Yeah, for me being a believer. Uh-huh. Say, but but go ahead. I'm Say, I'm just going to give God the glory. Come on, say, in the face of my haters. Yeah, yeah, every time they hate, I'm not, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to get in a fight. No, I'm just going to turn around and give God glory because I see a breakthrough getting ready to happen. See, let me, let me explain something to you real quick. Anytime you see somebody continually hating on you, it is letting you know you in the right spot. Anytime somebody is continually not giving you, the, giving you an applause and patting you on the back and they trying to cause mess and stir up drama, that is letting you know that you're in the right spot. Now, now, now I want you to see that hate is a spirit. Remember, hate is a spirit. And when we are releasing the spirit of glory, the enemy wants to combat the spirit of glory with the spirit of hate. Anytime, turn to your neighbor and say, anytime. Anytime you get ready to head to the other side of victory. The other side of the healing, the other side of the breakthrough, the other side of restitution, the enemy will always come to distract you. He will always come to delay you. He will always come to try to distract what God is doing in your life. Jesus is saying, I am showing up to give you life and that more abundantly, but the enemy is coming at the same time to steal that life, to kill that life, and to destroy that life. He always wants to distract you to delay you and to destroy you but touch your neighbor and say neighbor I don't give a care I'm headed to the other side anyway I don't give a care I'm headed to the other side of victory alright go, go to Luke 8 real quick and I'm out of here I'm out of here I'm out of here right here Luke 8, Luke 8. I'm out of here because some of y'all tired of me. I'm making some of you very nervous. I don't know why. Uh, those watching online, you nervous too? Have you clicked off yet? I don't know. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. <laughs> say, the hate will not stop you, man. <laughs> say, the hate will not stop you, sus. Amen. Luke 8, 22. We find ourselves back at this scripture. Luke 8, 22. They don't know why I keep going to Luke 8. Now it came to pass, somebody say on a certain day, that he, Jesus, went into a ship with his disciples. They're going on a missionary journey. This is the Evangelistic Association of Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they lunched forth. 
Now look at what's happening because I don't want you to miss this. Jesus' evangelistic trip. Jesus entered the ship to go on this trip to make it to the other side. Jesus here, hear me good, represents the glory entering the ship. Somebody say Jesus represents the spirit of glory entering the ship. And just like I told you, when the spirit of glory shows up, the hate will follow. Watch this. Luke 8, 23. But as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they filled, they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Now, Jesus is on the way to the other side, and the enemy sent the spirit of hate in the form of a storm to distract them. Hmm? Sent the spirit of hate in the form of a storm to delay them. He sent the spirit of hate in the form of a storm to destroy the ship. Now, now, here be good right here. It is one thing uh -huh, for hate to come to your life, but hate never, ever, ever comes alone. The Bible says the water also affected them because hate always brings other things with it. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, the spirit of hate always brings other things with it. Other things, watch this, that will attempt to sink your ship. Yeah, the hate uh, came, but it was coupled. Uh -huh. It came into your life, but it was coupled with the lie. It came into your life, but it was coupled also with the rumor. It came into your life, and it was coupled with the threat to lose your job. Hate brought with it a spirit to tear down your character. It came with a spirit to tear down your dreams and your visions and even your goals. Hate will always bring other things with it. Uh, I really want to move on, but before I do, encourage your neighbor and say, other things came with that hate. Say, I can't tell you about it, but other things came with that hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other things came with the hate. But remember, Jesus is in the ship. And this ship can't sink because my name is not Titanic. Turn to your neighbor and say, my name is not Titanic. Yeah, I don't care what hate, come on, cause me to hit, uh-huh. I may have hit it, uh-huh, but I am not going to sink. Yeah, moving on. That was a Titanic reference. Y'all ain't never seen Titanic? Okay. They hit an iceberg. Let me break it down. They hit an iceberg, uh-huh, and then they ended up sinking. Y'all seen the movie. It's okay. Uh, Luke 8, 24. And they came to him and awoke saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and what he did, y'all? Rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a great calm. Now, this is where we shout and go to church if you want to. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, the reason why the storm of hate came to stop the ship is because Jesus was on his way to the other side of victory. Watch this, watch this. He was on his way to the other side of victory to cast out a demon. Remember when he got to the other side, there was a man that was cutting himself. He was demon possessed. So Jesus had to take care of that. The enemy knew that was gonna come. So he said, let me, let me, let me delay him right here. Then he had to, come on, heal the woman with the issue of blood, amen? Cause she was on the other side of that victory as well. And then he had to raise up Jairus' daughter from the dead. So in other words, Jesus had miracles to perform. And I come to tell about 10 people in here and that are watching online. The hate you are experiencing right now on that job, in that marriage, in that ministry, with your money, is the devil's last chance to distract you, to delay you, and to hinder your miracle. And the devil is mad as hell. But I come to decree and declare no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper in every tongue of hate that rises up. God says, I am going to condemn. Can we give God a praise right there? If you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper, if you know that every tongue of hate that rises up, God is going to condemn. 
All right, I'm closing right here. I'm closing right here. I said every tongue of hate that rises up, God says, I'm going to condemn. Now help me preach it. Turn to your neighbor. Say every tongue. Yeah, yeah, every tongue. Talking bad about your money. Say every tongue. Yeah, talking bad about your children. Say every tongue. Talking bad about your ministry. Say every tongue. Talking bad about your business. Say every tongue. Talking bad about the car you drive and the clothes you wear. Say every tongue. Say God is going to handle that hate in your life. Yeah, he going to handle that hate in your life. Let's give God about 10 seconds of praise if you know he going to handle that hate. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on real quick and, and, and just and just jump to your feet real quick, real quick and go touch about five people and say, God going to handle that hate. Come on. Come on. Go encourage your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know it's been hard. I know they've been trying to knock you out of the race, but say, God going to handle that hate. Say, God is going to handle that hate in your life because greater is he that is in you than he, that's, than he that is in the world. I come to prophesy that greater is coming to you, that hate is a sign, that greater is coming to you, the devil is mad because he tried to afflict you and God made it fail. He tried to hook you on drugs and God made it fail. He tried to hook you on pornography and God made it fail. He tried to link you with the wrong relationship and God made it fail. The devil is mad. He's mad as hell. But I come to tell family life, be not dismayed. Whatever betide, God will take care of you and take care of your haters. Stay under his wings. Stay under his love. And every spirit of hate will not be able to stop you. I said every spirit of hate will not be able to stop you. Go touch another neighbor and say if you believe you can't be stopped. Give God a praise. If you believe you don't make it to the other side. Give God a praise. If you believe in spite of the hate God gonna take care of you. Give him some praise. Take about 30 seconds and begin to give God glory right there. Cause he's handling your hate. He's healing your heart. He's healing your heart. Hate came in and broke your heart. Destroyed your self-esteem. It wasn't them. It was the spirit of hate. But today God says, I want to heal you wherever you've been hated on. I want to heal you wherever it hurts you. You need to be just like Moses. Moses killed a man. And there was a lot of chatter about what he had done. And then he went and got married. And he was with Jethro's daughter. And the Bible says, as he was walking through the wilderness, he looked and saw a bush. And the bush was burning. And he said to himself, what's going on with that bush? I see bushes burning all the time. But this particular bush, something going on with it because it's not being consumed. And he said, oh my God, it's just like me. I've been going through hell. I've been hated, but I'm not consumed because my God, he is a consuming fire and he will handle every bit of hate coming out your family. Every bit of hate coming out that school. Every bit of hate coming out of that business. God says, I will not allow that hate to stop you. If you believe, God gonna handle it. Jump to your feet and give God a shot right there.